and uh, thank everybody for coming. We have a, a lot of prayer requests, a lot to pray about tonight, so uh, keep in mind tonight, uh, Gladys Rasnick is in the hospital tonight. She has COVID, and her son, Roger, has COVID, so pray for them tonight. And uh, Rick Harold needs prayer tonight. He's sick as well with it, so we've got so much, it seems like, going on. Uh, and Barbara Simcox, she is doing a little better with her uh, breathing and the bronchitis and stuff, but then I think she had a little trip or fall in the store, and so she, they thought she might have fractured her hand. So there'll be a couple weeks before they know that, but she said it's looking better today. So pray for her. She said if she gets a clean bill of health from her doctor this week, she'd try to be here Sunday. So pray for her hand. Does anybody else have an unspoken request? Pal's not feeling well. Okay. All right. Let's pray for them then. If you would, uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, stand for the and pray together. We're going to, uh, Billy and Wendy is in Florida, and uh, his mom's birthday celebrating his mother's birthday. So pray for them, and we're going to get right into the word tonight. And so just ask, let's go ahead and pray together. Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, for everything that you're doing. Lord, we ask you to touch uh, Gladys and Roger tonight. We pray that you would heal their bodies. We pray for Rick Harold tonight as well. And Lord, we lift up Barbara Simcox. Lord, you would heal her body completely and totally. And Lord, we just uh, call upon your name. We pray for Pal. Ask you to heal her as well. Others that lifted their hands, the unspoken requests, we just pray. God, uh, be with Debbie Callahan uh, tonight. Lord, I know that she's had a, a difficult day. We just pray for her to have peace and comfort. And we're just asking for the peace of God that passes all understanding to guard our hearts tonight. As we get into the word, we ask for your blessing and your understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated tonight. Well, we're going to get into the uh, message tonight. And uh, I want to talk about uh, prayer is the answer. And so we're going to read a story uh, in the book of Second Kings. So if you want to turn with me tonight. Uh, in Second Kings, if you'll go to uh, chapter 19, and let's go down to verse 14. We're going to be reading about Hezekiah's prayer tonight and the results that came from that uh, prayer and how that he uh, was met with the enemy, how he was under attack, under siege, and how God responded so let's look here at, again, go to verse 14. And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubims, thou art God, even thou alone. Of all the kingdoms of the earth thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open Lord, thine eyes, and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, which has sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone, therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord, our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, thou art thou all the kingdoms, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. And verse 20, then Isaiah the son of Amos sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, that which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib the king of Assyria, I have heard. What greater words could we get? From the prophet Isaiah as he comes to Hezekiah the king and says, God has heard your prayer. Thus saith the Lord. So let's pray. Father, thank you again for the service. We ask you to anoint our ears to hear. Give us eyes to see with. Touch every life. Change us, O God, forever. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to welcome those listening by live stream tonight. If they'll just uh, comment, let us know they're listening. And uh, we just want to... Uh, talk about tonight 
the power of this prayer that Hezekiah prayed. You know, I was sharing a little bit tonight uh, with Mark just a little bit. On the way, uh, as I was just meditating upon this, meditating upon this message and thinking about it, uh, it was almost as if the Holy Spirit said to me that, uh, you know, we don't pray to necessarily to get an answer because the answer is prayer. Now, I don't know if you can process that or not, but your answer to everything is prayer. So when you need an answer, you pray. And God responds. And God deals with that situation. And God comes on the scene. So I was thinking about the king of Assyria began to make threats uh, to Israel. He sent an intimidating letter to King Hezekiah threatening to destroy Judah. The enemy makes his boast that none can deliver out of his hand. So you think about the setting tonight. Here's Hezekiah. He's, he's, he's under a sage here. They, they, they've absolutely destroyed all the other kingdoms. Uh, and they have no problem doing this. The Bible says they took their gods and burned them in the fire because they were made of wood and stone and of other elements. So they were just false gods. But nevertheless, they burnt these stones and they or burnt these gods. And so they were bragging about how that they had already destroyed all the other gods of the other nations and that God would be no different. Basically, they were going to take care of him as well. And so this, uh, so I, I love Hezekiah's prayer. I love how he prayed for the Lord uh, to let him know this. Look at verse uh, 19. I love this. Now, therefore, O Lord our God, here's what Hezekiah says, I beseech thee, I beg of thee, listen to this, save thou us out of his hand, talking about King Sennacherib, that all the kingdoms of the earth, now listen to this, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even the only one. Now that's how you get, that's how we touch God. That's how we pray is when we recognize tonight that it is about God and not us. That it was so God's name could be magnified, so God could get glory. So he would be lifted up above everything else. And so this is where we're at tonight. So we talk about, how many knows the mailman? How many's ever needed uh, waiting for a letter from the mail? I know we get a lot of email now, so we don't uh, necessarily wait for as much uh, uh, physical mail. Could, could y'all back that off just a little bit? I'll get a little ring here. And so the mailman who delivers our mail would be the uh, most depressed person if he or she thought much about the letters they were delivering tonight. How many knows that? Uh, Thank you, backed off too much. Just a little more. Just put a little bit more on there. And so, uh, when you think about uh, some of the houses, when the mailman comes, how many knows he brings joy? And to some people, how many knows he brings misery? <laughs> I mean, it's just the way it is. When you get that check in the mail, how many knows you're excited? Yes, that check came today. But when you get that bill that's past due, how I many knows it's a little bit of sadness or, or misery? Or, or you get a, a letter from uh, someone telling you that someone has passed or, or, or bad news. How I many knows that, that discourages you? That's depressing. And so, so some houses, they bring joy, and the mailman to others brings misery. We don't know what tomorrow may bring, but the postman's knock may bring discouragement or could be a check that we've been waiting for. So this is kind of what when I want to talk about tonight. This letter that was delivered to King Hezekiah tonight was a letter of doom and gloom, basically. We're going we're gonna to take you out. We're going we're gonna to destroy this city. We're going we're gonna to trample this place. Nobody's going to... We're going to just kill everybody, and we're going to take your God out just like we have everybody else's God. And so this is the kind of letter he got. So the letter that Hezekiah received was a letter of doom and gloom, a letter that threatened the very existence of Judah. You know, to get a letter like that from another nation, it'd be no different than the President of the United States getting a letter from another country saying, we're going to take you out. We're going to take this nation out. And nobody's going to survive this when we're done. I mean, so that's, that's the devastation of this. That's the kind of letter that, that uh, the king of Judah received. And so he's discouraged here. He doesn't know, uh, he doesn't understand. And so we find out that King Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord. So here's, here's what we know. We do know this. He went to the house of God and he spread the letters on the altar. So he took the threatening letter that Sennacherib had given him or his servant had given him that told of all this doom and gloom, and he stretches them out on the altar. And Hezekiah lays before God, and he humbles himself and says, Oh God, only you can deliver from this horrible king. Only you can save Israel and save Judah from this devastation. 
and I need you, and I need you to pray. I need you to answer our prayer. I need you to help us and fight for us. So Hezekiah's prayer, when you think about it, was an appeal to God for the sake of his honor, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God. So he's actually throwing in God's honor into this prayer. He says, Lord, this is about you too. If they destroy us, basically, if they kill all of us and destroy it, then, then here uh, it also is not going to look good for your honor. So Hezekiah throws it in there that, so that the whole world will know that all those other gods, the reason they couldn't deliver those kingdoms is because they weren't real to start with. But the world may know that you're God and that you're the only one that can deliver. And so this is how Hezekiah prayed. And so he prayed about the honor of God. He prayed for God's honor to be reserved. So when you think about it tonight, folks, how, is, how the Almighty is touched by such an appeal. If we thought more of God's honor in our prayers, I believe we would receive an answer more sooner. How many believe tonight that if we prayed in such a way that it was about God's honor rather than us? How many of those, now, that's tough. That's tough. When you're really praying about something that's dear to your heart, when you're praying about something that's that just absolutely life and death, it's really difficult to really uh, uh, start praying about God's honor when you're desperate and you just want God to answer this prayer. But when we think about it, when we go to God and say, Lord, this is that the whole world will know. This is, to, this is to exalt your name. It's not about us. It's not about me. It's about you, God. And at the end of the day, you'll get full credit the whole world's going to know you did a, you performed an awesome miracle here and not some man. They're not going to put Tony Thompson's name on the news and they're not going to magnify me all over this world because I had this great healing or this great thing that happened in my ministry and so they start promoting me, Lord. No, we're going to promote you, God, because you're the one that did it. We're just the instrument. And so when we can take that into consideration that it's not so you and I get honor, but it's that God gets honor. And how many of those, I've always heard, I've always been told, many of my mentors have told me that it, when it doesn't matter who gets the credit, <laughs> well, it doesn't, but to some people it does. That's the problem. When it doesn't matter who gets the credit, then God will move a whole lot quicker and a whole lot sooner. Because I believe sometimes... Uh, it's, it's almost as if, uh, you know, it's, it's almost to lift us up as well. But it has to be about God's honor. It has to be to exalt him. So King Hezekiah was troubled. And so he's in trouble. For some time, the forces of the Assyrian armies had overcome the land and had taken the fenced cities. So Jerusalem had been spared only on payment of a ransom that had left them indebted to the enemy. So the first time Sennacherib comes up against Judah up against Israel, King Hezekiah, Hezekiah bribes him. Instead of going to the prayer closet, instead of going to the altar, King Hezekiah pulls out all the gold and all the treasures and pays Sennacherib not to attack him. Well, how long do you think that's going to last? That's kind of like blackmail. <laughs> you know, when you pay somebody blackmail money, how many knows as soon as that money runs out, they come right back. You th it just buys you time. And so here's the deal. He pays him to not attack that city. Well, that doesn't satisfy Sennacherib for long. He comes back this time. He do not just want the money. He wants everything. He wants it all. I'm going to wipe you off the map. So here we find that, that he enters into an agreement with Hezekiah. He left them indebted the enemy, but only satisfying the enemy for a short time. And now the enemy was back and demanded them surrender. So the money, now he's wanting more. Now he's wanting everything. He, said he doesn't want to be paid off because he's going to take everything anyway. It's all going to be his at the end of the day. That's what Sennacherib thinks. He's not lost a battle yet. He's, he's all high and mighty. He thinks he can win it against anybody. He's not come up against the God of Israel yet. He's about to face God on the battlefield. Not Hezekiah, but the God of Israel. And so Hezekiah had bargained with the enemy, paid them off for a little while, but the time came when they wanted more and he could, than he could afford. Hezekiah should have never entered an agreement with the enemy. He should have never paid tribute to Sennacherib. How many knows we shouldn't, we're not here to bargain with the devil? We're not here to bargain with the enemy. We're not here to say, you stay on your side, I'll stay on mine. How many knows that ain't going to happen? 
You know, the devil try to convince you if you'll stop doing what you're doing, he'll stop doing what he's doing. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Don't believe that nonsense. We have an obligation. We have to defend the gospel. And so we, we, we declare that Christ is more than able to do whatever it is he needs to do tonight. So Hezekiah should have never entered into an agreement with the enemy. When, this, when the first demand was made, he should have called on the name of the Lord. How many, how many knows that it's just like us? I'm not, I'm not picking on Hezekiah because how many knows many times God's not our first choice? And I know that's not popular. But how many knows God is usually, prayer is not the first choice. I mean, we're going to go to somebody, we're going to talk it over with friends, we're going to talk about it, we're going to see if we can get the money at the bank, we're going to see what we can do, we're, we're going to just see if we can do this without uh, uh, making it so much a matter of prayer. And then it gets so bad, <laughs> by the time it gets so bad, how I many knows now we're desperate and now we're on our face before God, I should have come here sooner. How I many has been there? Oh, Lord, one of you. Well, I know the rest of you have been there. Trust me. We come to a place where it's just, I've got to have God intervene in this situation. So we find out that, that, that sin, that we find out when we should learn from this, that we should never submit the claims of sin. We can never satisfy it. Don't ever give in to the devil. Don't ever treat him like a friend. Don't ever think that you can uh, win uh, him over or favor. Because I'm going to tell you something, folks. He doesn't bargain. He doesn't play fair. He's a cheat and a liar, and a thief, and a murderer from the beginning. I used to, when I was in school, we used to read uh, Aesop's fables. We used to read all that stuff for school, and I remember, you know, I, I just remember that snake talking that uh, a turtle into riding across the, the, the creek, the river, and him telling him, no, you'll bite me and kill me, you're poison. Oh, no, 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 just let me ride on your back, and I won't bother you, I won't harm you. About the middle of the creek, or the middle of that river, I mean, as that snake bites that turtle. And he looks at him and says, why did you do that? He said, you promised me you wouldn't do it. He said, because it's my nature. That's who I am. That's what I do. And you have to learn the devil's nature is to destroy, to kill, to seek and to kill out and destroy everyone that, that he can. But it is God's nature to seek and save the lost, to heal the hurting, and to, sal to salvage human lives, and to save us from, from torment, to save us from ourselves as well as the enemy. So I tell you, the devil has no right to your finances tonight. How many knows that? Listen, sin will take you, uh, take all you can give, and then come after more. And when it's all said and done, how many knows he'll come after your life? The devil has no right to our finances or a chance to steal one moment of our time. You give him an inch, how many knows the devil will take a mile? If you play into his cards, if you play into his, uh, into his little game, how many knows he'll lead you down a path of destruction? That little voice will say, this is no harm in this. This doesn't hurt anybody. Come on. Quit being a, a killjoy. Do this, do that, whatever. But how many knows at the end of the day, how many knows he, before you know it, he's taking you out? So understand that he gets an inch, he takes a mile. The city of Samaria had fallen, and all the land was possessed by Assyria. It was an insult to Sennacherib that Jerusalem should defy him. So King Sennacherib is so full of pride and arrogance. He's so full of himself and so proud of the fact that nobody has won a war against him, that nobody, he's, he's undefeated. He's so proud that he's taken out all these gods that when he gets to Jerusalem and Hezekiah won't bow to him, he is in infuriated because now he's met somebody that will stand up to him and he can't he doesn't like that how I many it's just the way it is the devil won't stop till he gets everybody till he gets everything he desires i can tell you that's the one thing how many remembers the story of of esther in the bible isn't it amazing to you that when uh haman wicked haman would come out there every day and that mordecai was one man Thousands and thousands and thousands of people bowed to Haman every day, except for one man. And that drove Haman crazy because he couldn't stand the fact there was one out there that didn't pay uh, him tribute. And that's what the devil does. He doesn't stop until he gets his way. And so we have to recognize that he's not going to get his way if we'll trust in God tonight. We have to stand no matter what. So the enemies of the Lord had gathered together. Listen, he couldn't stand the fact that Israel was uh, defying him. So the enemies of the Lord had gathered forces and surrounded Jerusalem and cried out in the ears of all the people their threats against them and demanded their surrender. Can you imagine the guys out there yelling at the gate? 
Hezekiah's lying to you. Throw down your weapons, open up the gates, surrender, and we'll let you live. Yeah, right. <laughs> Don't listen to this mad king. He's lost his mind. Throw down your weapons, open the gates, surrender. We're going to... King Sennacherib's never lost a battle. And he's out there yelling, and, and I can just... Hezekiah's trying, shh, stop saying this. <laughs> you know, tell him, trying to get him to, to stop. But here's what happens. Hezekiah, listen, the enemies of the Lord had gathered forces, surrounded Jerusalem, and cried out in the ears of all the people their threats against them and demanded them surrender. But Hezekiah, this time, prays. Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, and God answered him and sent Isaiah the prophet to tell the king that God had heard his prayer. That's awesome. Hezekiah prays to God. Hezekiah prays to God. And God speaks to Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah makes the trip and tells Hezekiah, here's what you prayed, here's what God said about it. I will defend this city. Not one arrow is going to cross that wall. Not one. I will defend this city. How many believe God will defend his people tonight? If we'll trust him. So Hezekiah praised the Lord, answered, and sent Isaiah the prophet to tell the king that God had heard his prayer. In 2 Kings 19, verse 32, God said that the enemy would not come into this city. If you want to read it in your Bible, in verse 32, he says, The enemy will not come into this city nor shoot, how many arrows? Not one arrow there. Verse 34 says, I will defend this city to save it for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake, God answered the letter himself. He did not trouble King Hezekiah to do it. God took care of business. God defended that city. God said, no arrows coming over this wall. Nothing's going to happen because you prayed to me and you trusted me tonight. Wouldn't that be something if, if we could trust God tonight in that same fashion that prayer is the answer, folks. Whether I get an answer to my prayer or not, Prayer is still the answer. Amen. Because you don't have options. Those other options lead to dead-end resources. But when you pray, you get unlimited resources. We have a God that's not limited by anything. And He, has, he gives you, it is His good pleasure. How many of us to give you the kingdom tonight? That's what He says. It's my Father's pleasure. It's God's pleasure to give you the kingdom tonight. So we find out that God answers the letter himself. He did not trouble Hezekiah to do it. There's a postscript to God's answer in verse 35. And it came to pass, listen to verse 35. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out at nighttime, smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and four score and five thousand. Now to translate that into... Today's numbers, that's 185,000 soldiers dead because the angel of the Lord went through that camp that night and took out almost 200,000 soldiers and never had to fire a shot. Isn't that amazing? The Assyrians was 104 score and 5,000. When they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. Can you imagine getting up and getting your men up to fight and all of them dead? 185,000 corpses laying everywhere, dead, no, nobody to fight. Listen to me. Can you imagine if you read in the newspaper tomorrow the sudden death of 185,000 soldiers? What a sight the camp must have been the next morning. What a sight after being scared to death out of your mind that this king's going to take you out, destroy the city, kill everybody in it, and, and now all of a sudden you get up the next morning and 185,000 soldiers are dead, corpses laying everywhere. Because God answered the prayer. There's no mention of this in the Assyrian records. When you look up historians, there's no record of this in the, in the Assyrians' records. You know why? Because they were... They were ready enough to boast, but when Sennacherib crawled back to his palace, he did not instruct the historian to chronicle his disgrace. He didn't want this in the books. He didn't want this loss of 185,000 soldiers dead 
in the, in the, in the historian, in the chronicles of, the, of his own personal books. And that's why it's not there, because he's embarrassed, he's ashamed. He crawled back to his palace uh, because he's embarrassed now. He's lost this war against God. When King Hezekiah called on the name of the Lord and spread those letters before the Lord, God answered and smote the enemy and gave Judah deliverance. Prayer is the means. Let's get into prayer tonight. We're going to be talking about it. Prayer is the means of holding communication with the unseen world. How many of those? It's our entrance into the unseen world. It is our communication to Almighty God. It is the approach of man to God. It's how we approach God, that we have that ability to approach God tonight. Prayer is the admittance on our part that we are weak, but He is strong. When we pray, we're basically saying to God, I can't do this, but you can. I need you, God. I'm not strong enough. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have what it, it takes to do this, but you do. You're strong, God. You can defend this city. You can take care of this. You have the ability to do this. Prayer is an admittance on our part that we are weak. He is strong. It's a confession of our own inability. But prayer becomes an instrument of strength when we lean upon the Almighty One who is able to do all things. I mean, those prayer becomes our strength now. Listen to me. We pray many times because we feel weak. But by prayer, we feel strong. Our prayer is not so much to persuade God, but to prove we trust Him. My prayer is not an argument. Okay, God, listen to me. Here's what's going on. It's not me trying to convince God to do a miracle. It's me trusting God. That's what, when I pray, God knows I'm putting my trust in Him. So think about that. So when we pray, it's not so much for you to persuade God, but it's to prove our trust in Him. Take your burdens to the Lord. Take all your problems and anxieties and lay them on the altar. Spread them out before His mercy seat. And in faith, ask for His help and guidance. And be assured He will will answer. In 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, Casting all your cares upon Him. Why? Because He cares about you. Hezekiah was no stranger to prayer. It was his habit. Not just when sudden danger was occurring. We are told that Hezekiah trusted in the Lord. He claved to the Lord. He was was accustomed to prayer with God. He was no stranger to prayer. I believe that's why David was a man after God's own heart. Because David prayed to God. David had conversations with God all the time. The letter was an attempt to mock Hezekiah's faith. It was an attempt to manufacture fear. And the devil will try every means available to cause us to give up and surrender. Don't you know that it's a devil's attempt to make you afraid? Don't you know this whole pandemic is, is real? I'm not, I'm, please don't, I'm not downplaying it. So don't misunderstand or misquote me. But don't you think the devil has had a heyday with this thing? putting so much fear in American people and around this world that fear has gripped the hearts of men and women like nothing else. Every Christian is a temple of God and God has vowed to protect that which belongs to him. How many knows God will protect what belongs to him? Hezekiah got a breakthrough. He humbled himself before God and touched the throne of mercy and grace. Whenever an individual or a church corporately touches God and realizes nothing's too hard for God, then he will rend the heavens and pour out his deliverance. I mean, he will come to our aid every time. But we have to trust him, folks. It's a, it's, a, it's a fine line of just praying and trusting God. I know that. I know that. I'm human, just like you are. I've prayed many times. Didn't get the answer I was looking for. Prayed, prayed, prayed. It didn't seem like the heavens were brass. Nothing happened. But I can tell you God is doing what's best. God is listening. God is on the throne. He's not vacated. He's not, uh, he's not stopping his ears up and not listening. He is hearing our cry, and he defends us. Hezekiah, got some, he got his breakthrough. I can tell you the church that is led by the Spirit has broken through the barriers of the flesh and operates in the realm where God and angels live. When we operate in that realm, we're operating in the realm where angels and God live. When we operate in faith and operate in the Spirit, miracles will become commonplace. Nothing's beyond the reach of such a church. She can pray anywhere, affect all things elsewhere. Her prayer knows no limits. Hezekiah took the defiant letter which demanded Jerusalem's surrender, spread it out before the Lord, and prayed earnestly. When trouble comes into our lives and circumstances seem to be out of control, we must do as Hezekiah did, draw near to God in fervency and trust in God. Lay, those, lay that on the altar. 
You say, God, here it is. I can't do anything with it. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know you've got to answer this. God has promised to deliver his people from the hands of the enemy and turn our circumstances around by clinging to God in trust and faith. How many of us will have peace to guard our hearts and minds tonight? How many of us the peace of God is what guards your hearts and your minds tonight? Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, everybody say, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ tonight. The Apostle Paul instructs us not to be anxious or worried. Let us take everything to the Lord in prayer. How many remembers that old hymn? Oh, what we surrender. Oh, what we, we, we're not able to, to get tonight because we don't take it to the Lord in prayer. The Apostle Paul, he knew something about prayer. It is through prayer that we renew our trust in the Lord's faithfulness by casting our anxieties, our problems upon him. Like Hezekiah, let's spread it out before the Lord. The peace of God comes to guard our hearts and minds as a result of our communion with Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Christ who what? Strengthens me. We receive mercy and grace and help in a time of need tonight. We are assured that all things are working out for our good, Romans 8, 28. God's working things out. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm telling you, how many knows what good, good food is? How many loves some good food tonight? Good food. I'm talking just been cake baked and it's been, it's been uh, fixed and it's been prepared. But you know, you take a cake, for example, tonight. It's, it's a delicious dessert. One of the, it's just amazing tonight. But if you just take the, if you just start out eating the egg by itself and eating the butter by itself and the cake mix by itself, how many knows it's not very good that way? But if you put it all together, put it in the water, put it in there, how many knows when it's all said and done, it comes out with something that's edible and something that's good? Amen? All I'm saying is, is all things work together for good. But sometimes I think we just think it's like, well, that wasn't any good or that wasn't any good. Well, wait till it's all put together. Wait till you can't see the whole picture. I can tell you, I've seen things from outside as an outsider or, or you, you're looking in a situation. How many knows that people get too close to something and they can't see it? But how many knows that an outsider, you can look through and see a whole picture here and there's a lot bigger than what they're seeing. How many believes God has the big picture tonight in mind when he looks at us? He sees everything. Understand, we receive mercy and grace in a time of need. We are sure that all things are working for our good. When we call on God from our hearts in sincerity, endeavor to abide in his word, then the peace of God floods our troubled souls. The peace is an inner tranquility mediated to us by the Holy Spirit. The peace that I have, how I many knows the world didn't give it to me? And the world cannot take it away. The peace you have tonight, God, God gave that to you. The world, why do you let the world take something away from you that they didn't give you to start with? I'm going to tell you something, folks. The devil don't even have the key to his own house. Why are you giving the key to yours? This peace, this inner tranquility mediated to us by the Holy Spirit. This involves a firm conviction that Jesus is near and that God's love will be active in our lives because of this. When we lay our troubled hearts before God in prayer, this peace will stand guard at the door of our hearts and mind, preventing the cares of this life and the heartache of disappointing from destroying our hope in Christ tonight. I can tell you, if you're here tonight and you got problems and you got troubles, and you got cares, and you got pain, you're in the right place tonight. Hezekiah was terrified, folks. He was at the point where he thought the whole kingdom was going to be destroyed, and that his life as well. But when he went to God in prayer, how many knows everything changed? Everything changed. You can rest assured God is aware and he's waiting on you to make your move, to make, to make up your mind that you won't buckle or bow to the enemy's lies. 
Let's make up our mind that we're going to take everything, every attack, every problem, every circumstance that threatens our well-being to the altar and stretch it out before God and believe His Word tonight. Isaiah 53, 17 says, No weapon. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. No weapon formed against you tonight is going to prosper. Every tongue that rises against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Do you understand that God is saying that none of these things can harm us or take us out tonight? Because God is in control. But we have to let him be in control. Not only this world, but of our own life. Understand, we are overcomers. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We will not be defeated because God has never lost a battle. He is more than able to deliver us from any situation that we find ourselves in tonight. Amen? Take everything to God in prayer, folks. Everything. Oh, what we forfeit because we don't take it to the Lord in prayer. It's the little foxes that spool the vines. It, the big stuff, we, we kind of... We, we see how serious it is. But it's the little stuff that we don't pay any attention to that over time, I mean, those can cause great devastation. We have to trust God in every little part of our life tonight. Let's bow our heads tonight.